couple of us who stayed true to ourselves. I've gotten a lot of crap for it. John's gotten a lot of crap for it. His personality is completely different than any other wakeboarder. He cares for everyone. No matter the people who's ever talked bad to him, he still is kind to them and he respects them. High school, also doing college, also getting his master's degrees, also starting a business and being a pro wakeboarder, winning contests. Yeah, you don't hear that. John is probably the smartest guy I know. Basically, I grew up skiing on a boat with my family. My dad loved to ski, and we had a, a little Nautique ski boat. And then when I was in high school, uh, my friend told me about this 16 and under deal on Mondays. His mom picked us up, and we came out and tried wakeboarding. One of the first times I came out here, I remember sitting up at these picnic tables with my dad, and I saw Julian do a Crow 5. And at the time, I didn't really know what that was, but I had been on trampolines a lot, so I was familiar with the flip. And, it was just super cool looking, and I was like, man, I really want to be able to do that trick one day. When I first met John, it was probably at OWC. I think John came up to me and was just like question after question, wanted to know how to get better, how to, he wanted to know everything. Every time I wanted to teach him something, he went and started doing geometry and physics on how to do a trick. He had actually learned tricks really fast, and uh, he got better than a lot of people real quick. Math and science is always something I love, and I wanted to be a theoretical physicist and just had a dream to go to MIT. And I started taking the subject test, got a perfect on a couple of those, and was ready to go to MIT. And then that's when I guess wakeboarding started happening, and I fell in love with that. And I came down to having to make a decision. MIT was way out of my price range and couldn't get scholarships and all that. I think the circumstances just made more sense to stay down here. I still wanted to pursue school and I still wanted to pursue physics, so um, I started at UCF, spent a summer in between semesters out in Texas working there and saving up more money and then I just started going to all the events that I could and things started going well and started making some money from that. My family was just super incredible and my dad, you know, saw all the work I had put in and after seeing the success I had the first year traveling, you know, they were a lot more supportive and kind of doing everything they could with me traveling and pursuing this internationally. The syndrome that is pretty popular is called Guillain-Barre syndrome and that is usually when you have a disease like cancer or something else. For him, it was basically a chronic version of that where his body kept thinking that his nerve cells were bad cells coming back and fighting him. In the off seasons, I remember there was one time where I spent four months sleeping on the couch of a hospital room because um, the disease started getting worse and he ended up not being able to move his arms and things like that. I stayed in communication with him a lot uh, with sending him pictures and videos every day so he could be a part of my life and you know, my sister would keep me updated on what's going on with his life so we could kind of just stay as close as possible. Well, the plan was to fly over to Europe for three contests. Um, there were three weeks in a row and then we were going to turn around and fly to Chicago to be with him during when it, the treatment started getting tough. And yeah, I flew up to Amsterdam where my sponsor's headquarters are and saw them. And his treatment was supposed to start, I think, two days from that point. When I, when I was in the meeting, I was getting calls from my mom. I wasn't sure what was going on. I figured it was just something related to the treatment starting. We were on a train and I just remember um, John getting a phone call from his mom and um, I knew instantly in John's voice what had happened. I kind of got word that um, throughout the night before his treatment, um, I guess something happened and he just randomly passed away. John just started crying for about three minutes and then we had to get off the train and then it just stopped. And then John acted like nothing happened. I got to Langenfeld and kind of, I didn't know what to do. He needed to go, you know, it's, he's a wakeboarder. He, his mind's there, not only to compete and be a wakeboarder, but to get his mind off everything. I called my family the next day after processing a little bit and they had all talked to him a bunch about a situation like this. His thought and my whole family's thought was to 
kind of put off everything if I was okay with it, the funeral and all that, um, until I got back because we all had worked so hard to make this a, a possibility. And then the next day, John just went out and started wakeboarding again. <laughs> wakeboarding was always a good escape and way to check out and just focus on something different. And I guess I just decided I was already there and you know, I, I knew that's something he would have wanted and I was just gonna see how the events went. To me, Langford Open was the biggest contest of the year. I was feeling so rough. I had nothing put together still. I normally practice way more for an event than that. I just remember like the doubts of like, am I doing the right thing? I probably should have gone home. Yeah, I started making it all the way to the finals and all of them are, I think, two-time world champions. I just wanted to get on the podium. I guess it came down to it and I was again just like, oh, maybe I got third, like, I hope I got third. The first ever champion of the Lannerfeld Open in 2007 is John Dryley.